What's up and welcome to Harbour Unboxed. I'm your host Matt and today we've got the privilege of looking at a very special motherboard. We've got ASRock's X99E ITX AC. ASRock's X99E ITX AC is their first ever motherboard to use the X99 chipset on the mini ITX platform, which makes this product pretty unique and special. This is something we would have thought was impossible not too long ago, but ASRock's really pulled it off. They've made it work so well in fact that you get to look forward to premium features like wireless AC, USB 3.1, SATA Express and M2 support. The only real trade-off of having the LGA 2011 socket on the mini ITX form factor is that you're limited to just two sticks of RAM, which rules out the quad channel feature of the LGA 2011 version 3 processors. But is it really a significant trade-off in the real world? We're going to investigate and find out a little later. But for now, let's pull it out of the box and see how ASRock has crammed all these features onto such a tiny board. So we've got a set of instruction manuals, first one is software, second one is the quick installation guide which is plenty thick, we've got a custom liquid cooling mounting bracket, standard I.O. panel, the USB 2 to USB 3 adapter in case your case only supports USB 2 at the front. The Wi-Fi antenna and Bluetooth antenna, along with extension cables. The PCI Express wireless AC card and the mounting bracket for it. With just two SATA cables, even though the board supports more. In this box is the bundled CPU cooler. And then we finally get to the board itself. Alrighty, so let's take a look down the I.O. panel. So, starting on the right, we've got your five audio jacks and optical output. Just next to that, we've got the two USB 3.1 ports. We've got four USB 3 ports and two gigabit LAN ports. We've got your eSATA next to that, CMOS reset, two USB 2 slots and a PS2 legacy port. We've got four 90 degree mounted SATA ports in the bottom right corner alongside the PCI Express Time 16 port. Just underneath the CPU is the M2 slot that can take cards up to 80 mil like this one. As space is tied on the mini ITX platform, ASRock has opted to use the narrow ILM LGA 2011-3 socket, making it slightly longer but much thinner than the standard square socket. You've also got the option of water cooling, with cooler masses sold in 120V Plus or 120V closed loop CPU liquid coolers. But for those that don't want to shell out for an aftermarket cooler, ASRock's got you covered with the previously mentioned Dynatron bundled air cooler. So this is how it sits on the board. For installation, the fan needs to be removed and all four screws need to be secured to the board. The two DDR4 DIMM slots are pretty snug against the CPU socket here, but you can still fit large memory modules like the HyperX Predator. So one concern we had with this board was that it only supports dual channel memory and this could hurt performance, as the X99 platform is meant to run quad channel memory. Yet despite an almost 40% drop in memory bandwidth when compared to quad channel boards, this little Azeroth wasn't any slower at all. And the Core i7-5960X delivered virtually the same results with dual channel memory as it did quad channel. We tried a number of application and encoding benchmarks and found absolutely no difference at all. And obviously the same is true when gaming. The bundled CPU cooler was quite loud and with the fan turned down to normal levels, the 5960X did get up to about 90 degrees. Cooling turned out to be pretty much a non-issue as well and it'll be even less of an issue if you choose to go with a liquid cooler. Features wise, you aren't really missing out on anything, which is pretty damn impressive for a mini ITX motherboard. Overall, the X99E ITX AC is an amazing achievement by ASRock and it truly redefines what's possible on the mini ITX platform. Currently, retail price is set at 250 US and considering most X99 boards do start at around 200 US and this is a pretty unique design with premium features, I'd say it is pretty reasonably priced. And it's definitely a great option for anyone that does want to build a pretty ridiculous mini ATX system. For example, here's our build that we used to test the board using the Silverstone FTZ01. This compact system also has a GDX Titan X installed, so it's a seriously powerful mini ITX gaming machine. 
Lastly, here's how the complete system compares in size to a standard Z97 ATX motherboard. Thanks for tuning in to Hardware Unboxed. We hope you guys liked Azrock's take on the mini ITX platform. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.